So hello everyone. I hope you're truly excited as we are um, as for today's meeting. Um, we have uh, um, really good reasons um, to actually believe that uh, this event is the absolute culmination of the DTAM project. And uh, I would like on behalf of our DTAM partnership, I would like to, be, um, to really welcome you to um, this wonderful event. A celebration, if you want, of, uh, of a, an innovative training course, but it's actually a celebration for uh, the whole of uh, Europe in terms of uh, vocational uh, education and training. My name is Ayri Memishev. Uh, I'm part of uh, Rusli Chamber of Commerce and Industry Bulgaria. I'm just one of the 10, uh, 10 partners behind uh, the DTAM project. And once more, welcome to our online webinar. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, share the agenda that uh, we have for today. Uh, just to kind of brush up on your memory, if you're joining us for the first time, or uh, if this is, uh, you know, you haven't uh, had a chance to look at uh, what we had uh, in the, uh, have posted uh, in the discussions, okay. Um, so, I'm, uh, we're going to start with um, a short presentation uh, of what the DTAM project exactly is. Then uh, we're going to move uh, to uh, the next uh, part of our um, important results from the project. And we're going to start off with the, the DTAM training course. Then we're going to present you a very special tool called the Digital self evaluation Tool. Uh, we're going to show you our training platform, and then we're going to have a look at our DTAM IoT network. Um, so first things first, um, I would like to get you started with what the DTAM project um, actually is. So once upon a time, about three years ago, to be exact, uh, we have um, uh, started uh, a new training curriculum in digital transformation project. Uh, which is the DTAM. So I hope you can actually see my screen. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Peter. <laughs> okay. Right. So here we are. Um, so, as I said, some three years ago, uh, we, uh, we kicked off the uh, digital transformation and advanced manufacturing project. Um, it started as a single idea as uh, where we wanted to create an innovative uh, training to address uh, an EU-wide issue. So, if you might be asking yourselves what, what kind of issue that is, um, and uh, you might have already guessed that we're actually trying to um, make sure that there's a way for uh, uh, people that would like to reskill and upskill their uh, knowledge and skills in terms of uh, trying to work in the uh, smart manufacturing. Uh, the DTAM project is um, a three year project and now it's toward its end. Um, at this month, actually, uh, we're closing the project, but um, we are at, now we're um, at the point where we're ready with uh, most or everything with, uh, with what we wanted to develop. Um, and we involved 10 organizations from five European countries. Um, in case you're wondering who are they, I've already mentioned Russia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which is uh, um, the dissemination leader and the promotion leader in the, in this uh, partnership. Our coordinator is uh, Politecnica Torrieri from uh, Spain, uh, from the Basque region. And we have another uh, four partners, three partners, excuse me, from Spain. We have Cluster Gaia. We have also uh, the Saranet. We also have the IFM cluster. Uh, of which uh, of uh, in bus game, uh, which is also part of the Gaia uh, technological cluster. Um, right, thank you, Vasilis. Uh, it's automatically recorded, so we we got it. Um, right, so um, 
I would like to um, invite you to um, delve into uh, our project even further by visiting our project website uh, after to learn more about our partners. Um, I would like to um, let you know a couple of other ideas that we had in mind when we created the DTAM project. Uh, you know, I already mentioned that uh, we wanted to deliver a new digital transformation curriculum uh, dedicated to quality training in key technologies for advanced manufacturing. And we're going to talk about that um, in a bit, but um, it's no secret that manufacturing companies uh, account for about at least 10% of the EU economy. Uh, but on the other hand, we have the SMEs, which are the backbone of um, our um, at our economy today. And um, so we recognize that the emerging reality requires not only special engineers, but also a trained pool of skilled operational technicians able to understand, um, install, configure, and transfer data and maintain the security of the high quality digital technology that connects and controls production or the so-called advanced manufacturing. Um, it is predicted that manufacturing SMEs will increasingly need adequately uh, trained um, operational technicians. Um, and hence, we have, uh, we have the DTAM project. Um, right. So, I've already mentioned that we wanted, with this project, we wanted to address the issue of having adequately trained technicians. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that there is a way for um, uh, both vet students, but also adults that would like to upskill and reskill uh, in order to work in the advanced manufacturing sector. So that's that's part of what inspired this project. Um, what else? Uh, we also wanted to make a kind of a um, homogenized knowledge flow ecosystem. So in this project, uh, as I already mentioned, and you've probably seen from the agenda. Uh, we have a certain flow of knowledge that goes into from it starts from the training course, a dedicated training course, then we have a dedicated training methodology and then goes into a platform. And then finally, um, it is celebrated with our DTAM IoT hub where um, any interested party uh, would like and could join our network uh, to exchange information and look for further collaboration inf um, opportunities. Um, we also wanted to kind of modernize the uh, vet offer uh, in the across the EU, um, as this is an international project involving more than five uh, five countries. Um, we have created a training course that is could be easily replicated in uh, any other country um, if, uh, besides uh, the countries already involved uh, in our project. Um, right, and I uh, also forgot to mention uh, which are these countries. Uh, we all, we have Spain, we have uh, Bulgaria, we have um, partners from Greece. Uh, perhaps I forgot to mention, so I apologize for that. Um, uh, we also had the University of Butters uh, from the uh, in the project. Um, also, uh, Atlantis Engineering or and IDEC from Greece. And of course, our partners from Italy, uh, Apro Formazione, uh, which are another vet school uh, that joined the project and provided their uh, valuable um, insights. Finally, we also have the Da Vinci College from Dordrecht, uh, Netherlands, uh, which provided uh, the backbone of our uh, training course, which is the training methodology. Um, going, to, going into more uh, in the project, uh, I've already told you about the problems that we wanted to address. So, what is really the DTAM project about? Uh, well, we wanted to make a high end quality, innovative training course to address uh, some key uh, enabling technologies um, in terms of the advanced manufacturing sector. And these technologies are machine learning, Internet of Things, transversal competences, cybersecurity, and big data and advanced sensors. All of these uh, create our, uh, inform our um, training course, uh, you, which of, uh, you will learn a bit more um, in the next uh, few minutes. Uh, 
Right. Um, forward, you mentioned that uh, we wanted to create um, kind of uh, create um, another um, easy way um, for um, a variety of stakeholders uh, to be able to um, help meet a critical skills gap in the EU, uh, European wide industry 4.0. Um, and I dare say that we did. Our target groups, I hope. Um, that by saying our target groups, I'm not going to limit this project to any of you. Uh, Everybody is welcome to participate in the detailed project. Uh, of course, as this is a vet education, uh, uh, vet, uh, vet education uh, project, uh, we are targeting vet centers, teachers, trainer students, and of course, uh, other training centers uh, who are engaged in education in general. But we also uh, wanted to engage with policymakers, policy making institutions, research centers, uh, businesses, active workers, even adult learners in lifelong learning, uh, and especially job seekers, employment agency, and representatives. Uh, by saying so, we are finally at the. Uh, I finally want to um, present you what with what exactly we created in these three years. Um, we started off with a document called Digital Transformation Skills Index in the field of digital transformation. And if when we say uh, digital transformation and advanced manufacturing and things like we want to create a new vet profile and things like uh, we want to help uh, people upskill and reskill, that probably rings a bell that um, we need um, a dedicated um, framework which will help us um, which will guide us uh, uh, through the training course. And so that's exactly what we did uh, with the Digital Transformational Skills Index. It's a document that we uh, consulted with uh, uh, tens of tens of companies that uh, in, uh, engage in advanced manufacturing and digital transformation in various uh, areas, uh, which uh, helped us build uh, this uh, um, skills index, uh, which can show you what to expect uh, from the training course and um, how that how what what is exactly that we we want to um, transfer to uh, our stakeholders uh, in uh, within the training course. So that's about the digital transformation of skills index, and then we have. Uh, developed a dedicated training methodology that uh, with a dedicated trainer's manual that can help uh, every interested party uh, to know how exactly um, to run the DTAM training course in their own field. So, uh, for example, if you're, a, if you're a school or a training center that is interested in using uh, this training course that you're going to, uh, we're going to share more with you later, um, you could just reach out to us and we will be more than happy to let you know uh, how to do this. And we also created the training curriculum, which is our training course, uh, which expands to the six areas that um, we have presented before in the key enabling technologies. What else uh, you might ask? Uh, you did for three years. Well, we also created a dedicated learning platform, which is easily accessible. It's free of charge. And uh, you can uh, log in there, uh, create your account, and access all of our uh, training resources. Um, another interesting tool that we created uh, that we're going to be uh, seeing today is the uh, digital self-assessment tool, uh, which is intertwined with some gaming, uh, gaming gamification elements, where you could um, easily just log in in the platform, and then you could. Um, try uh, see uh, what kind of skills do you already possess and then uh, our system um, our um, our code will help you identify areas that you're not that um, perhaps you're not that um, confident in um, and it will um, point you things that uh, and, and training contents that you might want to discover but both within and without uh, the DTAM training course that could help you upskill and reskill in terms of knowledge. Um, the training course is available in six languages. Besides English, we already have uh, Spanish, we have Bulgarian, we have Dutch, 
Uh, we also have Italian and we have Greek. So uh, the, the availability of this training course in these six languages uh, addresses this EU-wide uh, goal that we have to make education in VET possible for uh, a greater variety of stakeholders. Uh, finally, we have our DTAM IT Hub, which is a center for sustainable cooperation between various stakeholders. I've already mentioned uh, that we wanted to cooperate with a great deal of a great deal of stakeholders. So, what better way um, than having a dedicated online space where we could um, discuss um, digital transformation, use um, the sensors and the labs that we have created uh, in within our partners' uh, um, um, headquarters. Uh, where you could um, try and test some new technologies and uh, new algorithms and uh, new practices uh, if you want, and then try and roll them out, roll them out as an actual product. So it's kind of a, a validation tool for your uh, ideas uh, in terms of advanced, advanced manufacturing and training. Um, what we also did is um, we did pilot this test, so it's not. Uh, we did pilot this training course um, uh, by a dedicated um, uh, pilot testing uh, schedule that uh, have ended uh, a few months ago, and um, we are happy to report to you that this training course actually works in real uh, in real environments. Um, I'm going to share with you a quick video. Uh, from the uh, pilot training where we had uh, the actual students who used the training course uh, to share their experience. Uh, please bear with me, it's just a one minute video, so I hope you enjoy. And the performation. And we are working in Titan project. And we are the teachers. Anto, Stefano, and Joaquin. And we started from a motor with this controller, and then uh, from the controller uh, we create this program that catches the information from every sensor, and then this program uh, it analyzes and it catch uh, from the PLC. Who we when we did uh, uh, where we did our uh, program that uh, convert and uh, uh, visualize every type of sensors. So every signal is uh, on this graph. So we can uh, know if uh, there's any kind of problem with the motor and every type of information we can see. So we know the, if it's in good condition or not. Okay, all this data we send to our database using the the firewall. We are working with a firewall. To create a secure communication channel from our industrial system to the IoT hub. The IoT hub where data will be saved. And I hope you were able to um, hear uh, this video because I received a message that the audio was breaking. So I hope you were able to enjoy this video, but it's also available on our website. So I would really encourage you to go ahead and check it out. Um, I would like to send out a message to you all, uh, to both uh, all of you out there uh, listening uh, to, my, to me right now, and also to the people that are going to watch this video afterwards. Um, we would like to work with you. Um, so this is how to get involved. Uh, if you think that you have the um, necessary expertise in any of the project topics that um, I've uh, covered or you're going to hear about today, please get in touch with us so we can get you involved and um, 
build upon your expertise uh, to uh, improve this uh, project even further. Um, what else? Well, we, we, could, we would love to hear from you, that's for sure. Um, go ahead and check our uh, training course, the training platform, and all the training uh, resources that, that we're going to provide you with today. And uh, let, us, let us know what, 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 you, what you think. Um, if you'd like to pilot the training course in your own school or training center, also, please reach out to us. Uh, we're, we're, we are going to share all the resources necessary for you to make this happen. And we will be of uh, great support to you in, in doing this as a, as a regular training course instead of an extra training course. Uh, you could also join our multiplier events and sign up for our newsletter. Uh, we already have, uh, we already had some of our uh, celebration events. This is one of them, but it's online. We are also having um, a couple of more events in Greece and in Italy uh, um, this week uh, and next week. So please um, go ahead to our website uh, to learn some. Um, join our um, join to go ahead to our website, uh, click on events, and then um, scroll down to. Uh, to the schedule so you could uh, learn where exactly and how exactly you could join any of these events and please go ahead and come meet our partners in person. Um, finally, please give us a hand in sharing the news. Um, you can uh, use the, our DTAM project hashtag or you could share the media that you're seeing today or like our Facebook or Twitter pages, uh, anything helps. So, um, these are our online um, media. Uh, our project, uh, you may find our project at dtownproject.eu. Um, also, uh, we are available in Facebook and Twitter at DTown Project. So you may go ahead and uh, click um, and enjoy the various content. Uh, we are, have published. We have already published more than sixty quality articles uh, related to various um, aspects of advanced manufacturing. And guess what? We're going to keep doing so. So please uh, go ahead and uh, if you want to stay in line with uh, what's happening around the world in terms of advanced manufacturing, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, once again, my name is Armin Mimishev, and uh, I would like to thank you for joining our event today. Uh, and thank you for um, I thank you for listening to me, of course. And um, I hope you enjoyed this short presentation. But um, I'm going to now uh, hand the uh, screen to my um, awesome colleague from Politecnica Corrieri, uh, Joaquin, uh, who is going to uh, talk to you more about our uh, DTAM training course. Joaquin, you have the screen. Hello, everyone. My name is Joaquin Haga from Politecnica Corrieri. We are near Bilbao in the past region of Spain. And I want to present you the training course we have developed in the DTAM project. Let me share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of the project, before starting the development of the course, we had to to analyze what the companies needed as a as a skill or as a knowledge for our technicians. We are a better school. We provide a technical teaching in automation, informatics, communication, but uh, the industry 4.0 concept has other uh, knowledge and skills that we still don't provide as it's related to big data and machine learning. So for us, it was very important to know exactly what the company uh, wanted from, from a project like this. So uh, we created a, a skill index in which the main competences and the skills are listed. And uh, after that, we, we organized the curriculum uh, consisted of uh, four, 34 uh, training units uh, related to six models. The, the models uh, are, are there to be explained later, but uh, I will uh, list them. It's the introduction in which uh, the, the main concepts about industry and electronics are explained. 
big data for us is a new thing, so uh, we had to learn a lot of it. <laughs> uh, machine learning, also a difficult uh, model for us. Sensorica, which we work with uh, our automation students and also by the telecommunication ones. Cyber security, we, we, we have some experience with it. And transversal skills, as we, as we work in challenges and things work, uh, it was quite, uh, not, uh, quite an uh, experienced thing for us. So, the, the beginning of the uh, course starts with the curriculum, in which the main uh, um, knowledge, skills, and uh, learning outcomes are uh, defined for each of the models, and also with the methodology, uh, which works oriented to uh, teamwork and challenge-based uh, uh, learning. Before starting the training course, it is important to to make clear which is the starting point of each of the students, because, uh, for example, in our case, we have uh, students that come from uh, automation background or informatic background or uh, automation background or mechanical background, and uh, all of them have different uh, starting points. So we, we have developed a set, a digital self evaluation tool, which uh, helps them to know which is the starting point and what models they should uh, course and maybe others that they don't course. The first model was the introduction wall, in which uh, we tried to, to teach some basic learning about uh, informatics, uh, networking, uh, electronics, also sustainability, to students that don't have any of this uh, uh, knowledge or, uh, or skills. So, uh, in case they, in the reset, they get uh, um, some indication of uh, doing this model, the introductory model, they will go and, and course it just to, to start with a, a point in which they can understand other, other uh, concepts. The big data model, it is at the least in our case, the one of the most difficult ones because in the better level, it's not common to find this kind of uh, technologies or competencies. So in this uh, model, they learn about which are the tools used to work with the high, uh, big uh, amount of data, and how they should work with those uh, with those tools using, for example, a, a programming language as uh, Python. So in the big data model, we have the introduction, which is very important for better students. The model for the chapter for Python for data managing, and also the learn which is the the main uh, framework in which they will work with the big data system for us is Hadoop. The machine learning also is a quite a new uh, model skill or whatever competence for the better students. Uh, I suppose it's more uh, usual to use it in higher. Uh, Education as a university, but not so much here in the bed. And they, they, they started with an introduction. They learn which are the different uh, kind of uh, machine learning techniques, uh, supervised and unsupervised. Also, how to use the Python uh, programming language to interact with the machine learning system, which are the, 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 the actual uh, machine learning algorithms with they can work with Python. Very interesting, all of them, but uh, they require quite effort. The IT on Sensorica model is uh, the one in which we, we feel comfortable because uh, we have here uh, most of the concepts that work in automation as Sensorica, uh, gathering data, um, different uh, um, industrial uh, devices you can find on the automation system, as PLCs, uh, microcontrollers, or whatever. So, in this uh, model, they will learn about what is an IoT system. How can we use uh, Python uh, to, to create an IoT environment, an uh, IoT uh, complex system? For example, using Raspberry, which is the one uh, we use in the, in the project, or, or Arduino also. How we should connect the IoT devices to the system, we have different protocols. Mm -hmm. When we are gathering the data, where, where do we gather the data? What is the database? Is, how we can transfer data between the microcontrollers and the, the 
cloud system. So it is very important um, model for all the industry 4.0 technicians. The next model would be cybersecurity, in which the technicians will be responsible to create a secure uh, industrial system. They have to do the, um, the previous uh, risk assessment, in the risk evaluation and assessment, in which they, they analyze the system and see which are the main weak points. So they propose uh, measures to, to make it uh, more secure. And the chapters uh, in the model are the, the one in which we define what is an IT and OT environment, which are the different features for all of them. How do we do a risk evaluation? So we have to know well which are the main dangers in one industrial system, which policies will make more secure uh, industrial system. How can we secure the communications between devices and the database uh, for industrial system and also how to create a security report. And finally, but not less important, the transversal model uh, gives uh, the basic competences to work with different people from different backgrounds and also in team. Um, we are working in an international project, so our students sometimes they will work together and uh, the, the, the different uh, cultures, the different uh, backgrounds, the well, the different uh, also technologies that they have to learn, uh, they need the special uh, competences. For example, they have to be able to self-learn, to have a critical thinking. Uh, they have to communicate well with other people. They have to be prepared to work in teams. All of it is what we work in the transversal module. There is, a, as uh, Stefano will show you later, an online training course based on Moodle in which all the models are in, different, in the different languages. They have quizzes and exercises, practical exercises they can do. Stefano will show it. And we have created also the uh, IoT laboratories that are connected to a central IoT hub in which our students will send the data so they can still uh, start working with the different uh, technologies and systems we have uh, developed in the um, give, uh, uh, training in the in the project and also as uh, i said before we have do, done the piloting a group of students from apro italy came to our school and well we, we did our our best in that piloting so thank you very much to all. That was uh, the training course uh, we have developed and we will see it in more, with more detail later. How can thank I you very it? much. Yes. How, uh, how, I would like how, to thank you for uh, this wonderful presentation of the detailed training course. Uh, now uh, we are slowly actually uh, getting into um, our more uh, technical uh, part of our event today. I'm going to hand out the word to uh, our colleague uh, Cristina Ortega from uh, the Gaia Cluster uh, from Spain uh, to present the digital self evaluation tool of the DTAM project. Cristina, you, uh, you, have okay. the, you have the screen. Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Cristina Ortega. I'm part of Gaia, it's the ICT cluster in uh, in Basque country uh, mm, 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 <laughs> let's see if i'm able to 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 share my screen yes, here i am i think everybody's looking at, at the at the screen no uh, yes it's visible uh, okay so um in gaia uh, we have been responsible of doing this uh, um assessment this assessment evaluation uh, tool that um, uh, we have been we done it uh, in a less invasive way using a gamified test. No, within the data project, uh, we have uh, choose to evaluate uh, eight skills that are the ones that are shown in the in the screen. 
and uh, we evaluate those uh, skills through games, through basically two games, and then uh, that one is the island. We call it an strategy game that uh, allow us to to evaluate those competences as learning, problem solving, leadership. Etc. And another game that is called a basket that, that uh, checks uh, flexibility. And uh, what about intercultural communication and globalization? We can do it through another uh, um, tool that gives us the 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 the, the self assessment tool that is an interview. But maybe later on, my colleague from Greece uh, will talk about uh, about that. Um, um, I have that in the PowerPoint, but in real, I don't know what to, to use. I don't know <laughs> if, uh, if I, I will be able to, to do it uh, straight away. And uh, let's, uh, I don't know if I check in sharing my, my screen. Do you see me, my screen? Yes, my, um, the, the tool. Are you yeah, looking yes. at the tool or yes. the PowerPoint? Yes, yes, yes vale. But the, once you well, you can enter the, the tool through the, our website, of course, login, no? like in all the programs. The first thing you see is a, a small dashboard with information about the several projects you are, uh, are in process. No? Number of, of, of process, uh, the results, Excuse the me. average. I'm yes. seeing the PowerPoint no. at the moment. No, no. So you are seeing, looking at the PowerPoint then. I come again and use the PowerPoint. Uh, what, is, what I wanted to say is, is what I was saying is that no, that the first uh, information that the tool gives you is a small last board about the processes uh, I have been been doing uh, at the, uh, by the members of the of the of the of the consortium because I haven't seen it before. But the tool is uh, um, ready; it's, it's done in the uh, in all the language of the project partners. We have Greek, Dutch, Bulgarian, Spanish, Italian, and, and English. Um this small dashboard of information. The second thing you, you choose or you do is to choose the, the processes. Uh, we have here different kind of uh, profiles in the in the in the school, no? We we have the data um, profile, that's the one that we use with some kind of with the two games that we have chosen. And once you uh, you do a process with your with your students, your you 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 have a, 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 another dashboard that show you, you know the some information that can be shown in different uh, you can in, in different with, with different that columns. You no, know, you can put the information, uh, choosing which information is uh, important for you, the rating, the progress. And you have here also a view of the results of the of the group. No, the the the, the tool allow us to check uh, also uh, soft skills, as I said before, and hard skills. And it's quite easy to create a test uh, and you add uh, to that um, self assessment the 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 the. the Test you want because we, we have developed a lot of them, no? But you use was for example Java or machine learning, the one that is interesting for the, the, the student, because the idea is the students to do that questionnaire, that test before starting the, the class. That way uh, he can pay attention to that where he's less strong, no? This is the, 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 the main idea, no? To reinforce with a, a knowledge, uh, you are more weak. So uh, after all the, the, the good thing for the student that, of course, no, you have to do an effort to do that uh, test, it gives you a small uh, um, report with information with the results of your uh, self-assessment. You have the, the, um, the soft skill assessment, assessment and the, the questionnaires that will be lead to the hard skills. And for example, you can see easily not what in which one uh, has uh, a better no, a score here. And in uh, networks or so in Python, you can see it 0 from 14. Um, you can enter also the 
the, the test and see the, the right answer you see here in red very easily there is was that was a, a wrong answer the right answer was the number four and the student has chosen the number the first one no and the rest of the 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 questions were were okay um this is the the kind of uh, results the rap uh, rapport that gives you uh, related to the soft skills no uh, again uh, a small flash information related that, that is red it's not good green, green is okay as so well as excellent and here uh, the uh, a graph a graph um, star twal <laughs> graph that you can see uh, the, the the level was asked for that competence and where you are you know that gives you again was a, a point for ref on reflection and on work and I'm, I will try to just because <laughs> I'm not okay with uh, not showing you the, I will try to connect again two seconds, stop sharing, I will try to share again to show you. Uh, mm -mm, that way, again, because I think my PowerPoint was not perfect. You Now you are seeing the, the tool, yes. Oh no. Yes, we are seeing the tool. Vale, okay, great. So again, eh, sorry. Um, that first, that first uh, screen with information, the process, um, to create a process, uh, I don't know if you are interested in how easy or not is to create a process, but it's five minutes. <laughs> You, you, we have already chosen, we have already created the, the tools, the, the games, the island and the basket. It's just uh, it's in order just to, 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 to put them all together. Um, maybe I show you all the tools. If you are interested, I can show you how to create a process, but it's very easy. We have here the process, the different tests you know, that we have, been, we have done with our students. Uh, for example, here we have the the the, the test we did with the, the, the our colleagues from um, that um, that they, they did, and again, no, as I saw you before, the list of all the students, no, that have been invited to to participate in that test, uh, and for example, we have that that person Renko Drolenga. We can see again the results. Of that person's PESA fundamentals and the answer for in each in each uh, in each test, and also we have the assessment that is related to the soft competences. And again, you have um, a, a evaluation for each each competence and gives you the 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 tool gives you a. Um, um information about okay you are doing well or not you you need to work more in that in always in a positive way and we have the that test for the school and that test that is for the, the for the applicant hmm? and more or less uh this is the so you can choose as i said before uh, you can select the students for the the rating or for the progress no we who is for example this person has not started yet this other one uh, has, has done has done all the tests but the result is was no no good no you can uh, uh organize the, the information uh using all those those options um more or less so um, this is the this is the the tool i don't know if is this if there is any question or it's more clear thank you thank you very much christina uh, let me have a look uh on our comment section to see if uh, there are any questions right i've uh, sent a com uh, comment to you all so if you want to uh, engage with our presenters you can just shoot a quick comment and then uh, I will address uh, your question to the presenters. Currently, we have none, but we also have a dedicated questions and answers session at the end. So, once again, thank you, Christina. 
Uh, now uh, we're heading out uh, towards our DTAM training platform, and uh, I'm going to hand the screen to our uh, colleague from Aproformazione, uh, Stefano Anton. Uh, Stefano, you have the screen. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. perfect. <laughs> because I, I have some problem with the hardware today, but uh, we are we are here. Okay, so I'm very happy to present you my part of uh, this project uh, i'm talking with, uh, from our iot lab in apro in alba italy uh, so i share my screen and fastly we can go deep inside the platform okay tell me if you see my screen okay yes i am is it okay? Okay, perfect. So I start from the main website, ditamproject.eu, uh, just in order to show to you where is the access to the platform that we use for the e-learning. Uh, the platform is accessible from the several points, for example, from here in the e-training platform or at the bottom of the page here at uh, join the platform, obviously. When you click here, you can join the platform uh, in this uh, uh, in Moodle. The Moodle is the system we choose to develop uh, the, the contents. Um, now I'm enrolled inside uh, as a student, so the interface uh, I'm showing to you is the same that uh, your students or uh, external user of the platform or the, of the platform uh, will see uh, when uh, they are logged in. Uh, is, uh, is, um, it is very easy to register. I, today we don't have the time to show all the registration uh, procedure, but uh, it is now to insert uh, your email and confirm your subscription by the link that we, you will receive by email. The platform is uh, available in, in several languages. Uh, in, this, in this part, you can choose the language for the platform interface. Uh, now we will proceed in English, and the first thing that uh, you can you can see is uh, the possibility to choose uh, the language of the contents uh, between the six languages that uh, we uh, present to you before. So the languages of the partnership plus English. Um, now I I will enter in the English part. Uh, the other are, are the same obviously in the translated in the, in the local languages. Here you can find the, the uh, different section that uh, compose the DTAM project. So the terms uh, are explained before by Joachim, by my colleague Joachim. And uh, what I will show you now, um, to you now is uh, uh, what uh, it is inside the platform in order to give you the possibility to take a look uh, to uh, our philosophy of work. Uh, I will return on the first, the first point uh, at the end of the presentation because this one is not a course, the IoT Lab, but is uh, only the possibility to reserve uh, a session inside the four IoT Labs. So I will show you at the end. Uh, the five different times, uh, the six, sorry, uh, different times are divided uh, uh, by the introduction, the transversal skills, the cyber security, the advanced sensor, and the, mach the machine learning and the big data part. Inside uh, the introduction, you, you can find uh, some uh, little arguments that we developed in order to align the skills, the competence of the, um, the users that uh, uh, don't have uh, uh, and out information about, for example, uh, uh, as we said before, electronics or, inform or uh, IT, and uh, uh, students can uh, know what are they, they, they needs, uh, the, the fields that uh, they have to study more uh, from the digital self-evaluation tool, tool that um, was shown before. For example, uh, just in order to show the structure for a course, uh, I open the cybersecurity one. When you are inside uh, um, a course, you can find several materials uh, like books, 
uh, where you can find the theory of the, the uh, proposed argument and uh, some uh, uh, assessment. So, for example, this one is uh, the assessment about the first part of the cybersecurity course. Inside a book, you can find uh, the specific material. What we tried to do is uh, to um, give, uh, all, obviously, something uh, bright uh, material, but uh, uh, we tried to integrate with a lot of pictures, with a lot of images, table, uh, additional videos, uh, um, in order to maintain uh, the attention in a high level. We know as uh, teachers that uh, it's not easy to maintain the, the, an high level in, of attention, especially when uh, uh, a student has to study himself uh, uh, in an online platform. So um, we, what we tried is to uh, provide something not boring. Um, all the, the books are organized uh, as, uh, with an index in the, in the side, in the left side, I think, yeah. Um, inside uh, this index, you can, with this index, you can access, uh, access uh, inside the single argument, or you can choose to study or read uh, the part and proceed with the row, the arrow at the bottom. Yeah, you can change the, the, the various information. Um, as you can see in the different pages, uh, you can find a lot of uh, visual, very visual uh, uh, material. Coming back, uh, for example, I will show you um, what is a, a quiz inside, uh, inside the, the material. Now I'm uh, logged as a teacher. And uh, I can find, and, um, I can't uh, use the quiz uh, as a, a real student, but uh, I can give you some uh, uh, a little show about it. Also, inside the quizzes, uh, we choose to uh, not only uh, have uh, uh, multiple choice quiz, but also, for example, this one is a drag and drop quiz. You can drag and drop the answers in the white fields. In this way, or uh, in other cases, uh, you have a multiple multiple choice quiz, uh, or other kind of tools that uh, allow uh, the students to verify the knowledge and the competences they acquired studying in the in the books. Um, what uh, about the completion of a course? Uh, about the completion of a course, uh, it is enough to complete uh, all the quizzes we present in the in a, in a course. Um, I can say also that uh, uh, students can, uh, can, can have uh, the situation of their study because uh, um, every time they completed a book or a quiz, uh, an icon compare, uh, in, the, in this icon is, right, is written, uh, Merck, uh, uh, completely done. So if it, it is a quiz, uh, also it will appear the um, achievement or not uh, the, of the, the quiz. And so at the end, uh, you have, um, when you complete all the quizzes uh, and all the assessment that uh, we propose, uh, um, you can receive uh, the so sort of um, attestation or the certification that you completed the, the single course. So coming back, uh, obviously I, I have not a lot of time and I don't want to waste time because uh, some colleagues has also to explain some more after me. Um, I will show the, uh, as the last thing, um, what is the IOTAB booking system? So entering inside the IoT Lab booking system, for example, about the uh, IoT in, um, in the Netherlands. Here you can, uh, you can see the availability of uh, the IoT Lab. You can book a session in, or more than one session in, um, in the IoT Lab and you can access directly to, IoT, to, the, to the lab uh, 
uh, with the help of uh, obviously of uh, our teachers or also um, uh, create an online session to, uh, where you can uh, not use obviously all the, uh, the ut ut utilities of the lab but you can take a look inside the lab for example inside the, uh, the data we collected uh, or uh, uh, something more and I think uh, uh, Peter after me will be more specific. So I think to uh, to be at the end to uh, to to be at the end, uh, I give the floor to to the to, to Peter for the IoT Hub and Lab explanation. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have uh, some question, uh, you can write it in the in the chat, and we will answer at the end. I think uh, Heidi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stefano. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we now have uh, the time to uh, um, to have a look at our DTAM um, IoT network and talk about it a little bit more. And of course, I'm going to hand out the screen to Peter Snowy from the Vinci College. So, Peter, you have the screen. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll try to share my screen with you. Um, okay. Give me one second and then I'll be back. Okay, so while we're waiting for uh, Peter to come back, uh, I would like to just quickly um, help you out um, with reaching to our uh, project website and uh, have a look at it. Um, let's see if this works. Okay. Okay. Okay, she's back. All right, welcome again. Yep. Thank you. Um... trying to share my screen, but I don't have the, the correct permission. Now, I'll, I'll try again one more time. Fantastic. You hear me? Yep. Yeah, thank you. My apologies. It did work before the meeting and it didn't work again. All right. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the IoT network. My name is Peter from the Netherlands. Um, and we have been working together in the Dayton project to create a connected lab where students and uh, partners from the work field can uh, build prototypes and, and learn new things. So, uh, what does it look like? Well, here you have just one student working on a prototype, uh, but we have uh, a couple of rooms where uh, we can work on, on DTOM hardware. Uh, we have available all kinds of sensor devices like Raspberry Pis, uh, Arduinos, PLCs, and Raspberry Picos, for example. Uh, many, many different sensors and also all the technology to uh, let them communicate either using wire or wireless. Uh, then we have a couple of network services to store measurements and to create graphs. And this is something that I'm going to show you in this little demo. Uh, and we have a central partner, Saranet, who connects us securely together over a VPN. So uh, we can work from anywhere. Here's a little diagram of the different labs being connected. So here's the, the Dutch lab in the Netherlands. Here's the Spain lab, the Greece lab, lab in Italy. And if you like, you can have, you can also participate with your own hardware. We can help you get on board 
for doing even more experiments. And then in the central, in the center here, are a couple of cloud services. This is a more technical diagram. For now, I'll just tell you that uh, every lab has its own router. It's connected to the internet. It has its own switch where you can attach all kinds of different devices and computers and laptops. So what does it look like? Um, well, we start um, making a prototype using a Raspberry Pi little device. And we connect some sensors. We have the sensors send data to a central database and then we visualize the data. And this is what I'm going to show you in this demo. So let me just switch my screen. I'm working today from home. I have a Raspberry Pi 3 and I decided to show you uh, the temperature in my country. Um, I connect my Raspberry Pi to Sirenet using a VPN and I send my data to a MySQL database. And in the end, I show you some nice graphs where we can show the different countries. Uh, it's going maybe a little bit fast because I don't explain everything, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get started with the lab. So what you see here is the screen of Raspberry Pi. It's the little computer that I showed you on the photo. Um, and the first thing I always need to do is to connect to the Saranet VPN so that my Raspberry is connected to the lab, even though I'm not working in a physical lab, but I can use the VPN to connect to it over the internet. And we want it to be secure. So that's why Saranet provides us with a VPN. I did have to install Open40 VPN. It's a little package which allows us to build a VPN secure connection from any device, as long as we have a valid user and name and password, which we do have here. So it shows me the tunnel is up and running. Um, now I did attach a temperature, temperature sensor, and I use this little program called NoteRed. It um, is started every minute. It reads the value of the temperature sensor, it's a DHT11. It adds some time data. It corrects the format so that it can, it can be sent to a database. And then it is being sent to the database. And also for my own convenience, I have some debug output to see if it worked or not. So with this configuration, every minute a value is read from the temperature sensor, it's being sent to the central database. Now let's verify and see if this works today. Um, so what you're looking here at is a, a table where each one of us uh, stores the results. So you see in the last hour or so, we have measurements coming from uh, University of Patras in Greece, and we have measurements coming from Da Vinci College. And it just depends on which lab has which uh, devices started up. So this will vary over time. So we see here, and yeah, when going up, we also see Italy and we saw Spain as well. Um, and just uh, at this current time, 10 seconds, uh, five minutes, 1600 hours, you see the it's 22 degrees over here. Now, if you uh, want to visualize it, uh, we have another little tool. Um, it's called Grafana. And Grafana is taking a look into the, the MySQL database that I just showed, and um, it plots the temperature over an amount of time. So I've put it on the, to the last 90 days, and now you see that Italy started measuring on the 2nd of October, and Greece started measuring on 26th of September, and Spain was even earlier. And you also see the temperature drop in the Netherlands to 22 right now. So this is just a very, very quick demo of something that you can build using the lab. Um, and it's, uh, it takes some technical knowledge, and this is explained in the course. Um, it takes you some time to get started, but it won't take you more than 15 minutes to get up and running. And since we have all the, all the necessary hardware already set up, uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, 
applying for a time slot as Stefano just showed you uh, and get started. And, um, and we use this, for example, to have our students measure uh, uh, different sensors and, 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 and work together, bring them together into a graph. Um, it's a lot of fun and you're all welcome to, to try it and uh, uh, visit us or, or contact us to, uh, to get assistance for using remote. This is what I wanted to tell you. And please let me know if you have any questions, because that's what we're here for. All right, thank you very much, Peter. Um, right, well, uh, we're very much uh, at the end of our um, uh, event. And now I would like to hand over the floor to you guys out there uh, listening to us. And if you have uh, any questions, we have the answers. So please uh, don't be shy. I'll shoot your uh, question in the comment section and we would love to answer. All right, I think we have some uh, uh, being shy uh, issues, so I have some questions for you guys um, while we have the time to um, for our uh, listeners to uh, uh, be more uh, proactive and uh, have some questions for us. So, um, uh, I don't know, maybe Joaquin and also uh, Peter could answer the, the following questions. Uh, what were some of the difficulties uh, or the uh, the good parts of the pilot training uh, experience that you had within your schools. That uh, same questions probably applies to Stefano. So please, uh, would you, for our listeners out there that are representatives of schools that would like to try out the DTAM uh, training course, uh, what was some of the challenges that uh, you had uh, in performing the pilot trainings? Yeah. I can tell something about it. Um, um, we noticed we have students um, uh, from uh, EQF level four, and it's uh, vocational training. And um, we noticed that they really love to get hands on as soon as possible. So they they are really practical guys. So they just want to, he to hear a question or a problem and they want to start building right away. And uh, of course, we encourage them to, to get our data uh, before they start and to have a good understanding of what's uh, what would be the best solution um and this was like um a um, little bit of tension so we wanted them to really think before they act and they wanted to get started immediately uh, so we had some good conversations about it and and um, uh, they they did discover that uh, it, it, their solution was better when they uh, when they spent some more time um, designing first so there was a lot of fun um and uh, well, one of the successes is they really liked what they were doing um, and it made it easy for us because it was an exam. It was a mandatory part of the curriculum. So they had all uh, needed to pass uh, the exam. So they were really motivated to to get much out of it. Um, but yeah, in, in, it was a great experience doing it. We've, we've run the pilot twice and the next pilot is coming up. Well, that's not a pilot anymore, but the next round is coming up uh, next month. So, yeah. 
it works uh, okay. very good. Thank you, Peter. And how many uh, how many people you uh, how many students did you have in those uh, two uh, pilot things? Uh, the first pilot had two groups of 25, so around 50 students. And the second pilot in spring had uh, also uh, 45. And uh, the third group next month will be 110. It's like four, uh, four groups starting. Well, well, good luck with that. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. All right. And then, uh, Joaquin, Stefano, did you have anything you wanted to share about any challenges you experienced with the DTOP training course and the piloting? In our case, it was similar to Peter. Our students are not used to this so much. So the reading part and the, the doing the tests was uh, maybe the most exciting uh, for them. But the practical part, which they work with the cyber security systems and whatever, it was quite nice for them. Thank you. Thank you, Hopin. Um, and okay. uh, in and my uh, side, uh, it was uh, very challenging because uh, our study address uh, is uh, normally more oriented in industrial automation, especially in the hardware. But uh, so we um, teach about. Uh, uh, programming uh, uh, and especially in robotics and PLC programming in the last year. So we didn't have the experience about this kind of system, but uh, I have to say that uh, the result was great. Uh, our uh, students involved in the pilot last year and also the students uh, that uh, are using the platform this year are very, very involved, uh, are very excited to create, uh, for example, uh, uh, collection of the data from uh, the PLCs or the, from the sensor to create some uh, graph uh, uh, to analyze the data. And so I think this, pro this project uh, was uh, very, very useful and very successful for, uh, for, uh, for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stefano. Uh, I think uh, it was uh, quite of a experience uh, for all of you to have uh, this uh, DTAM training course with uh, uh, rollout in your own schools, as this was the first time to ever do this. Um, Mary? Yes, Sorry? Maria. I was going to give the I... word to you because I saw your hand raised. Okay, I, I thought you didn't see it. Okay, uh, so what I wanted to share is that in Greece, the, the DTAM pilot training was done from a distance, and that's a different uh, scenario because we worked with university students. And uh, the, the good thing about it is that even when you don't have face to face, um, you know, very often contact with teachers, uh, it, it also worked quite well. Of course, we had dropout. We started with 23 uh, students and we ended up with 11 completing successfully the course. But I think that the, with online lessons, this is acceptable, this percentage of dropout. Uh, we also had very nice feedback from the students and they um, very much appreciated that they had the opportunity to, to come to contact with uh, already set up sensors and networking to try the data analytics tasks and uh, that they also had at their disposal many resources from the online system and additional videos and uh, web pages where they could go and practice uh, what we taught them. Uh, so the experience was positive in another mode of study as well. And this has been very interesting uh, for us also. Thank you. It has been a very pleasant uh, joint effort, Dita. And thank you, everybody, for this. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Maria. Uh, I completely forgot that you did also run the, uh, the pilot training in, the, in Greece as well. So thank you. But it was indeed a different experience as we had it online. Um, so um, going back uh, to uh, our comment uh, section, uh, let's see. Okay, we have a couple of questions. Let's address them. Uh, so Victoria is asking, is it free to join the IoT club? Okay. Yes, it's free, uh, even though it, it takes some um, entry level hardware to be able to get started. So if, if another partner wants to join, um, 
it will take up uh, some Raspberry Pis or a network switch, um, basic things that most companies have lying around somewhere. So it's, it's really easy to get up and running. Okay, perhaps we should answer a similar question to it. Uh, how complicated it is to set up uh, a lab in order to join the IoT hub in case they don't have one? Well, if you want to have a permanently connected lab, it will take some uh, networking skills, uh, uh, specifically programming Cisco router and switch. Um, we have fortunately uh, a colleague who is willing to assist, so um, um, we can help each other out quickly. Um, but it took us some time um, initially, and um, and when you use the VPN and use uh, uh, separate devices, uh, then it's even uh, even more simple to get started because you don't need physical network hardware. But the the VPN is uh, working for twenty four hours and then needs a little restart, so um, it takes some more manual work, but it is uh, very, very doable. Okay, thank you, Peter. I hope that answers the questions. Uh, then uh, another guy is asking, what kind of business did you consult when creating the Digital Skills Index? All right, uh, Hofin, perhaps can you, can, you can answer that question. Thank you. Yes, we had a different uh, interviews where we prepared a form also, uh, in which they the answers were collected and we we talked with uh, some uh, IT companies uh, some operators also we talked also with some manufacturing companies that uh, work around us and also that uh, some uh, automation companies that build those automation uh, systems in which the manufacturing process is uh, done and most of them uh, well gave uh, us a useful um, feedback and the the, 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 the the main points were the, the collection of data so the data collecting uh, system with related with the IOT system and big data is uh, one of the main points also the cyber security which is very important to, 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 to maintain everything working properly and the machine learning was uh, was uh, well a desire more than <laughs> More than a need because our our in, in our uh, area the, the the most of the companies are not uh, doing the, the manufacturing companies are not doing machine learning but they are uh, uh, willing to willing to start with that kind of technologies so we, we in some in the, the next years they will start doing their first experiences with all of it and that's the type of uh, companies we we talk to. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, did you have, uh, I think we we had a number of, uh, do you remember the companies, the number of companies that we did in, in fact contact? Uh, I think it was uh, around 30 or something, but I'm not sure. I don't remember the name. We, 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 I don't, yeah, I can't tell well, quite a lot. Yeah, it was, but there were some, yes. Oh. There were some. Okay, uh, Marco is asking, does the training you have carried out cut across multiple fields or is it focused on one particular area? Um, who would like to answer that? Uh, perhaps Hawkin, Stefano? You mean the, the, the sector in which the, the, the data was uh, focused on? Yes, the areas, I, I think that's what Marco is asking, if it's focused on just a single area. Mm. or if it's focused on multiple uh, fields. In our case, the digital transformation was focused on the manufacturing industry. That, that's uh, why the, the name of the project is like that. In, uh, in the bus region, we have a lot of uh, manufacturing companies. They work uh, with different, uh, well, I don't know, they, they, they do everything. And, uh, and they are willing to start, the, 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 well, they, they are automatized, automatized and everything like that. But for example, some of them lack of uh, cybersecurity proper systems. They do what they can, but they don't have a very well uh, established uh, auto, um, uh, cybersecurity system. Or they, they collect some data, but they don't know what to do with them. So that, that uh, stage of the, um, the Industry 4.0 development is uh, still already with, uh, not done. Not done. So um, that kind of uh, manufacturing companies uh, want uh, uh, skilled technicians in those those areas in those um, skills and uh, I suppose big data is a, a, 
a main point for for the economy of today. But in our case, the, the manufacturing sector was the one that we wanted to focus, and the big data machine learning are focused on it. Even if the training course is more uh, open, it's not only focused on the manufacturing uh, industry. I suppose it could be uh, used for for any type of economic uh, uh, activity, but uh, the project. That's why the IoT is oriented to the sensoring and the data gathering. The project was oriented to manufacturing industry. Yes, if I can add uh, one thing, I think uh, you can apply all these kind of technologies in uh, different fields. For example, uh, uh, we collect data maybe from an industrial machine, but you can collect data also from an uh, uh, automated building uh, or uh, from uh, I don't know, some sensor in the city for uh, uh, create uh, uh, some uh, data analysis inside uh, uh, other kind of field. So maybe the examples we provide are more focused on the industrial field and the manufacturer's field, but all the contents could be used uh, in, a, in a wide uh, kind uh, of sectors. Uh, thank you, Joaquin, Stefano, Marco. I hope this answers your question. Uh, if not, hit another comment and we'll, we can discuss more. Um, right, we have another question uh, at the chat. Uh, how do you test the knowledge of your students before and after the training course? Okay, this is a good one. Uh, so, uh, who would like to answer this? I can. Well, okay. first of all, we we uh, we did the, the digital self evaluation tool which was uh, focused on the transversal uh, skills and also the technical skills in the piloting of uh, the the DITAM project we focus on the cyber security so i knew most of them didn't have much uh, <laughs> much knowledge so it was easy for me to to know we, we, how they started but uh, I suppose for new students, we will have to do a better uh, analysis in the beginning because, uh, for example, I am providing a, a teacher in an advanced manufacturing uh, course, and most of the students now come from a mechanical background, but uh, it should be open to students from also uh, automation or informatic background. In this case, it's not uh, difficult as they come from the mechanical course. But uh, when we open the, um, the the call and more and more students come from different backgrounds, it's going to be difficult, but not difficult, but it's going to be necessary to make a, a, a first evaluation of their knowledge and adapt uh, everything to, to it. Thank you, Joaquin. Uh, Thank you very much. I think that was the main idea behind the digital self-evaluation tool anyway, because that's what we use to uh, kind of uh, help the students learn uh, what skills are they lacking. And then um, hopefully through the DTAM course, they could focus on those areas and improve uh, and upskill uh, by finishing it. So um, I would like to also invite you to have a look at our, at our project website where you could learn uh, even more about each of the tools that we are presented, we have presented today. Um, let's see, I don't see any other questions at the moment. Um, well, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for joining us today. Um, to those that are going to watch this video afterwards, uh, please go ahead, visit our website. Uh, like our social media pages and stay in touch. Uh, please shoot us an email, call us, uh, text us, write us, whatever. Uh, see if we could uh, help you out with uh, using any of these tools. Uh, you can also check them out by yourself. But uh, if you would like to collaborate, we are here to do so. Okay, well, thank you very much. And let's keep upskilling our future. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.